Good day class. In this video, we are going to study a new subject, one is Materia Medica. This subject is focused on the herbal medicine, especially the herbal medicine that used in Chinese medicine. We are going to study the general introduction, the names, the origins, the indications, the actions, as well as the applications of some of the herbal medicine. In this subject, we, we are not going to introduce the full content of the Chinese material medica. We are only going to have a general introduction and we are going to introduce some of the herbal medicine to give you a general idea on the herbal medicine. Until now, after we study the history of the history of Chinese medicine, the basic theory and the diagnostics, we all know that acupuncture is a modality of part of it's actually a modality of Chinese medicine, and Chinese Chinese medicine includes herbal medicine and acupuncture. And we all know our program at UJ, the program you are studying now, we design for acupuncture. Which means after this four years study and even the fifth year study on either homeopathy or phytotherapy, you are only going to be registered as an acupuncturist and homeopathy or Therapy, which means after the study, you won't be able to register as a Chinese Chinese medicine practitioner. So here's a question: though. Since you are not going to be registered as a Chinese medicine practitioner, which means you are not allowed to use Chinese herbal medicine in your practice. So the the question is. Why we need to study the Chinese herbal medicine since you are not going to be registered and you are not going to use herbal medicine in your future practice as an acupuncturist. So the question is why we need to study. And also in this study, in this in these few videos, we only focus on the general introduction of Chinese material medica as this subject is a full a, a one year subject. So if we begin to study, we at least going to use a few months to study the herbal medicine only. But now we give you a general introduction in a few weeks. The reason is since the acupuncture is a modality, a part is a part of Chinese medicine. When you study acupuncture, when you qualify as an acupuncturist, you ought to know the full picture of Chinese medicine. You need to know what are the parts of Chinese medicine. So then you will have a full understanding of what you are practicing. Also, from the history, the study from the the study in the history, you will understand this as a modality in Chinese medicine, acupuncture. It's, it's inevitable to be to develop along with the Chinese medicine. So we also can see the developments from the herbal medicine parts, and in the meantime, we will see how the acupuncture develops in this way. In the basic theory and the diagnostics as you have studied in the previous in actually in this year, we talk about symptoms, we talk about the pathogenic factors such as dampness, the wind, blastasis, of phlegm. We also talk about yang deficiency, yin deficiency, blood deficiency. 
See, when you have these kinds of diagnosis, especially after the case study, you will understand that our focus, our conclusion, be based on the syndrome. When you diagnose a patient, when you diagnose a patient with heart insufficiency, then you need to think, what can you do to help to improve the heart insufficiency? That's your fault in this in this subject, the herbal medicine. You're going to choose the herbs that have the function to tonify in or to tonify, specifically to tonify the heart in. Or a patient suffer from excess, excessive phlegm or dampness. Then, in the treatment, you can choose the herbal medicine that have the function to clear the phlegm or to clear the, the dampness. That's how we treat the patient. That's also why, in the case study, I always emphasize that you need to conclude to a syndrome. The reason is the actions of the herbal medicine, as well as the acupuncture points. We focus on these kinds of actions. This kind, especially these these kinds of expression in Chinese medicine way to clear phlegm or to clear dampness or to tonify yang, tonify qi. Another very important aspect and very important reason why we need to study the herbal medicine is we, because we, go, we are going to study also the general introduction of the formula. When we treat a patient, we need to give the patient a prescription how to organize um, acupoints in a, in a prescription, how to organize the acupoints in a prescription. That's the same way how to organize the herbal medicines in a prescription. So we need to study the principles of the formula in order to apply the principles in acupuncture prescriptions in future. For example, when we study the herbal medicine after a few videos, you will understand that some herbs we should not use together and some herbs should be used together to enhance the effect. Some herbs, if you use together, the, effects, the, the desired effect will be reduced, even we create, we create toxic parts, which we don't need. And then after the study, you will know why. In, in the meantime, when you think about acupoints, that you study in the acupoints, the acupoints and the meridian in the second year. You also will understand some points when you use together, the, if, the effect will be enhanced. Some points, if you use together, the effect will be reduced. But why? The answer you will find in this subject, Chinese Material Medica. And when we study this subject, we see that, especially for the herbal medicine, the names of the herbal medicine, still in Chinese, so we need to learn to pronounce the Chinese name. Uh, the reason is because the Chinese name is still the most common names we use in herbal medicine. The other reason why the names hadn't been tran translated that commonly is because the same species, the, the same herbs, the same plants, in one single plant, if we use the flower, the leaves, or the stem, and the roots, these different parts of the same plants 
might have different function and in this situation in the Chinese name we can separate them clearly but when we translate into English it becomes very complicated especially when you write down a prescription and in future if you have the chance to see the compounding and dispensing license in South Africa the, in South, South Africa the requirements we also require the Chinese name to be presented on the prescription or in on the label so you need to learn to pronounce and remember the Chinese pronunciation and all, when we study the basic theory the qi qi some students doesn't want to pronounce as qi they pronounce as qi and yin and yang they don't want to pronounce they instead they said y i n or y a n g if you pronounce in this way you're going to make your study more complicated and confused to others as well because these names are very common and well known already in the English speaking countries qi yin and yang same as here the, the herbal medicine we still keep the Chinese name in this general introduction we're going to focus on four aspects the definition of Chinese material medica, the development of Chinese material medica, the effects, properties, and actions of herbal medicine, the factors affecting the clinical applications. These four aspects, the second, the development of the herbal medicine, actually we have we have introduced already in the history of Chinese medicine at the beginning of this year. So when you see the content, you will see it's actually a revision of that content. Followed by this general introduction, we're going to we are going to discuss some specific herbs just to use as examples to show you how to analyze the effects, the property, the actions of Chinese herbal medicine. And if you are interested in the herbal medicine, then you can have you can have self-study on these herbs. We are going to emphasize again in future when we study the ethic and the, the, the legal framework of acupuncture in South Africa. Although we study the, the herbal medicine. You also you knew the general introduction, you knew some herbs. The herbal medicine is not in the scope of practice as an acupuncturist. When we try to define the Chinese material medica, we're going to define in these a few aspects. Or in other words, we're going to think in these few aspects. What's Chinese material medica? What can be used? What for? And what are the results? From the definition, you will see that Chinese material medica refers to any substance which is collected, processed, and whose mode of action are demonstrated under the guidelines of traditional Chinese medicine theory for clinical applications. The traditional Chinese medicine theories, what are the theories? These theories are the theories we study in the basic theory. So from the definition, when we uh, analyze this, this definition in these four questions, these three questions, what can be used? Any systems, what for? to pre prevent for the clinical applications what the clinical ad applications refers to to prevent disease to treat diseases to diagnose diseases 
So as we study at the beginning of the uh, acupuncture study, we said that as Chinese medicine, we not only focus on the diseases. When a patient comes to you with certain discomfort and certain complaints, that's the diseases, we're going to use something to treat the diseases. But in the meantime, don't forget that in Chinese medicine theory, in acupuncture, even in acupuncture treatments, we need to have the way of thinking how to prevent, how to fix the root causes, how to help the patient to prevent the disease happen again. So these two are the main category of the treatments, either from the herbal medicine or acupuncture, to prevent and to treat, to diagnose. So this is sometimes not common. It's only used in complicated conditions. Sometimes the diagnosis or the condition is not easy to identify. And then we can try some herbal medicine. And if the patient recovered, then the diagnosis can be confirmed. If the patient becomes worse, then you will know that's the, the wrong diagnosis. So this, although we can use herbal medicine to diagnose, to, to diagnose diseases, but this is not commonly used. Only we will use in a very complicated, very difficult conditions. What are the results? After you use the herbal medicine, after you apply the treatment, the patient can recover, can prevent the disease happen. So they can maintain health, they can keep healthy, they can recover or healed. So that's the result of the treatments. But all these aspects we are based on the tones and conditions. These indications, these usages must be applied under the guidelines of Chinese medicine theories. For instance, how to understand this? If the, if the herbs, now you, you also study the homeopathy, phytotherapy, all these, are, you, are not, uh, I don't know a lot about the homeopathy or phyto, but I do know you also use herbal medicine. And there's one day that we have um, a, a small function with the other lecturers and the fifth year students in the Victoria Yard. And then we see some plants. We saw some plants, the herbs there, and those herbs were Chinese herbal medicine. But I realized that the homeopathy also use, for example, the chrysanthemum. We also use in homeopathy. We also use in Chinese medicine. But when you use in homeopathy, when you use according to the homeopathy theory, we don't call it as Chinese herbal medicine. If you need to use the chrysanthemum in, as a Chinese herbal medicine, it must be applied according to the Chinese medicine theory, which means chrysanthemum can be used to clear the heat in the body. That's the Chinese medicine theory. So as you can see, not all herbs are Chinese herbal medicine. But in the, mean, in the meantime, if the tablets, if you use according to the Chinese medicine theory, you also can be called, it can be called as the traditional Chinese medicine or in a broader sense of herbal medicine. So all kinds of systems we can use, no matter artificial or from nature. 
Most importantly, is they must be used under the guideline of Chinese medicine theory. The next question, what are they made of? We have actually already answered this question. Can be any systems, mostly natural or processed. So it can be plants, animals, bugs, mineral systems, chemical and biochemical products. But I have to say, mostly are plants. When we see this information here, there's a one thing we need to add, clarify. That's the term material medica. Material medica in English, it refers to the herbs or the plants. But when you see the information here, you will understand that when we use the term Chinese material medica, we actually refers to a broader sense. We include we actually include the medicine that we use in Chinese medicine, which means it includes the plants, animals, mineral systems, and etc. Another question here is why the herbal medicine are mostly plants? One of the reasons for, for this is because the Chinese medicine especially the Chinese medicine practitioner in the past, has been greatly influenced by the, the culture, it's especially the development of China. This is actually the thought from the Buddhism. Buddhism was initially from India, and it was introduced to China very early, probably in the 2nd and 3rd century. Latest in the 4th century, Buddhism was very popular in China. And the Chinese medicine practitioner at that time were inevitably be influenced by these kinds of thoughts in Buddhism. They don't want to kill lives. They don't want to kill animals. That's, al that's also why nowadays there's, there are still Especially for religion parts, the Buddhisms, someone who believes in Buddhism, they choose to be vegetarian. They, their food, they don't eat meat because they don't want to kill animals. So these are the, these are the, the thinkings from the Buddhism. And Chinese medicine has been affected a lot this way of thinking. That's why, even in our treatments, we don't use a lot of animal products because we don't want to use someone else or the animal's life to replace your life or to help. We don't want to kill something to make you healthy, rather use plants. And then when we talk about this way of thinking, you will also know that some of the news or some of the bias from the traditional medicine that's not true for example the rhino horns this there were many debates not any debates crit criticisms talk about the, the traditional medicine especially chinese medicine they they thought that rhino horns were used in Chinese medicine, and that's why people approaching the, the rhinos. But after you study the Chinese herbal medicine, you will know that we don't really use the rhino horns. Especially nowadays, we don't use rhino horns at all. Even in our textbooks, in the Chinese, in the Chinese medicine pharmacopoeia, you won't find any information of rhino homes from decades ago, not even now. We don't really use this. That's also because rhino homes are kinds of animal products 
we don't really use a lot in herbal medicine. Different modalities of Chinese material medica. Chinese material medica is not only one subject. After the development, it has become a group of science. The Chinese material medica is the one we are going to study. We study the efficacy, efficacy the inactions, and the, the property of the herbs. The Chinese material medica cultivation. It studies on the how to grow the herbal medicine, how to keep the species, how to improve the the quality of the 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 growing as well as the effects of the herbal medicine. Pharmacology. They try to understand the theories behind the herbal medicine. The here theories behind the actions, the phytology, the chemistry. They study the, herb, the herbs as, as a whole plants, and also they try to understand from the kinds of modern science, from the chemistry way, to see what are the ingredients in the herbal medicine and which one have the best results. One of the most typical example from the chemistry, Chinese material, material medical chemistry, is the antimicin to treat the malaria. That's some invention or development from the Chinese material medical and pharmaceutical engineering. Chinese material medical processing. It's a subject that's to study on how to process of the herbal medicine, how to change the function of the herbal medicine, or change the actions of the herbal medicine. We're going to introduce a little bit of the processing, but not a lot. The evaluation and verification. This subject is going to study, is going to study how to identify the authentic herbs and the uh, fake the fake ones and also how to identify which one got the better quality and which one got the uh, worse or poor quality the patterns of family also subjects so these are different modalities of the Chinese material medica we, we are only going to have a general introduction of the Chinese material medica and who are going to who are going to study all these subjects are those who study Chinese medicine who study as Chinese medicine pharmacist pharmacist. So they're going to study all these different subjects. Thank you for your attention. In the next video we are going to have a brief introduction on the development of Chinese medicine.